Okay, sorry about that. Talking to myself. Could you guys hear me? Uh, if you get, members of my cherry room, if you can just post in there, if you can hear me, that'd be good. Because I can't find the uh, for some reason the. Uh, cool. All right, we'll do this uh, disclaimer. I'll be back in one minute. We'll get going. Uh, all right, I'll be right back. Risk exposure statement in the risk of loss containing stocks, EDFs, commodity futures, derivatives, options, ports, and cryptocurrencies. This risk can be substantial, and therefore investors should carefully consider financial stability prior to trading. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. The software, strategy, chat room, websites, and any associated websites and digital things for educational purposes only should not be consumed as an express or implied promise or guarantee that you will prompt your losses may be limited in any manner whatsoever. Users of the information acceptable responsibility for the outcomes of their deployment in all cycles of trading, LLC, and any associated company, agents, managers, owners, and customers, regardless of the reservation, please trade responsibly. Commodity futures trading commission, CITC, rule 4141, hypothetical and simulated trading performance results are certain and no limitations. Some of these are described here. No representations being made in any kind of slightly to achieve problems are similar to social. In fact, there are frequently sharp differences between hypothetical and simulated performance results and the actual results that could be achieved by any particular trading program. One of the limitations of hypothetical performance results is that they are generally pre-year with the benefit of hindsight. In addition, hypothetical trading does not involve financial risk, and no hypothetical trading record can completely account for the impact of financial risk in actual trading. For example, the ability to extend losses or adhere to a particular trading program is why that trading losses are material points which can also adversely impact actual trading results. Because these trades have not actually been executed, the hypothetical results may have or overcompensated for the impact, if any, of certain market factors such as lack of liquidity. There are numerous other factors related to the markets in general, which implementation of any specific trading program which are not fully accounted for in simulated trading or in preparation of hypothetical performance results at all, but which adversely impact actual trading results. All right, thanks for joining us. I got my uh, trade room in here and then it's on an email yesterday too. So I think we got some other other people in here as well, other traders. Mark, can you hear me? Hey Scott, yeah, I can hear you great. Awesome. And then do you see the share screen button if you need to do that? Now that I so this. that's not coming up for me. I think I need to be made presenter. I'm guessing that's how it works because all I see is the option to share my webcam and I don't okay. think we want to get into that kind of world. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Stocks, December stock sell and few 241 contract. Yeah, I do that once in a while. It's not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think people are more concerned with the markets than seeing our gorgeous faces. So let me see. Uh... Okay. Do you do you want me to make a presenter now, or you just want me to get going and show these markets a little bit, and then we can flip back and forth or? Whatever. Yeah, we'll flip back and forth. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, because uh, you know I want to ask some questions. I'm sure people have questions as well. I'm just not seeing sure. where on this chat where I see the questions. I guess we'll figure that out. But... Yeah. Okay. Um, so just a quick rundown of these markets. What's going on here? Of course, equities are just sitting on highs as usual, and uh, Fed meets today. So probably should have maybe not had this meeting <laughs> right at the open. Uh, the good news is, you know, the Fed is meeting, so it'll probably be kind of slow. I, I was thinking anyway, but, um, you know, gold and crude are getting killed, so maybe not. So we'll do our best to do my best to trade and ask questions and things like that. But so you can see, yes, just building balance here, balance, balance. It just keeps grinding up. And, you know, until some of these areas get violated, these high volume nodes of these balance areas, you you, you got to play long. Um, so, you know, if this does break, say this balance breaks, then you got to be watching this one. The two important areas that we always talk about are highs of the prior balance or high volume nodes of prior balance. So it's got a lot to get through for this thing, thing to turn even remotely short term bearish. Um, so you're best off looking for places to buy. NASDAQ looks exactly the same. This here, as far as balance, we are trying to break out of this right now. So if I do get a long signal, I will take the long. And again, we're above structure, right? So all structure is our traders placing bets. So you know, long, short, long, short. When someone's wrong, when the 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 wrong side is wrong, they puke. So that's that's how I trade, and that's that's what markets are. So you know, for some reason, if this does one of these tries to break out, fail breakout, that's one of my favorite trades, and fails, then I will I will potentially take a short and be very cognizant of this next area down. I even have an alert here if that touches that. So, um, But to the active markets right now, you can see this is gold. Um, an important area here where we... NQ stocks, December stock sell NQ. 
150 contracts. I'll come back to this in a second. I just want to see what's going on here. And then we'll get, uh, just want to kind of go over the stuff and then we'll get into the tick strike stuff. So I'm not seeing any threshold. So this was threshold actually. So Mar, are you familiar with Bookmap? Do you use it? Do you, what do you, what do you usually use to trade besides your tick strike stuff? So um, I, I've i heard of Bookmap. I've never used it. Um, I just use tick strike at a DOM. That's it. Wow. I don't have charts. So you're more, you're more of a scalper than I'm assuming. Uh, not even that. Um, I, I just prefer to listen to the flow. I, I've just found it makes it a more of an immersive experience just using tick strike and um, I'm, I'm watching it. I mean, I, 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 for me, every trade is a scalp until it proves itself. So initially I'm looking for a short move, but if I see correlation um, behind that move, like, you know, Apple, especially with NQ, uh, a bunch of the major stocks moving with it and the market's moving together, I'll hold on a bit longer. Right. Um, but, but generally speaking, that, those, are, those are the two modalities that I use. But I, I don't really use charts. Right, that's kind of how I use it as well. Um, you know, so you know, back in the day when you first uh, introduced this product, I think it was probably yes. at least nine, ten years ago, right, or more. Uh, I would use it more for just being alerted to other markets activity, right? Because you can't obviously watch everything at the same time. So I would have these meters up, and I would. Um, you know, here crude was firing off, and then I hop over there to watch crude. But it's kind of evolved now that you know that you've updated your software, and you've got so many other things on here. You know, I got to remember there's not a lot, a lot of guys are new to this that are on here. So you know, you can see here he's got the forex uh, futures, stocks, ETFs, um, the internals. S&P I size for sell order that he has. Um, and then even crypto so i haven't even begun to play with crypto is this is this pretty good what's your feedback on that it as far as uh, so far i mean the the crypto side of things and the internal side of things those are both experimental but they've been working quite well we've been getting really good feedback we use uh, the on-chain metrics for crypto to try and replicate the same ideas that we would uh, implement with a, a futures exchange so it's it's been pretty interesting, um, you know, just dabbling with that as a different market because the the demand for it just seems to be increasing over time. Um, right. So so far, I mean, people seem to like it. Uh, Bitcoin is is the one that seems to have the most, you know, kind of reliable data at the moment. Um, so we've we've kind of we've got a few others up there, but um, the volume really seems to be in within Bitcoin and Ethereum, I guess. Um, and what I'm hoping is over time just to keep expanding the research on that because we use a slightly different method on the tick strike side of things for it. Yeah, but I was going to ask you, so what, what exchange do you use for that, like when you're gauging the order flow? So we merge the data from different exchanges together. So, you know, primarily we're using Coinbase and Kraken, um, but we are kind of, the goal is to just keep expanding the data that we offer and we we're, we've also recently been looking at the on-chain stuff with our own node um just to see if there's an edge that can be created with that that's kind of experimental at the moment cool. do, do you know what uh, just a quick question um i can see a chat box but i don't see a questions box um usually with uh go to webinar there's a questions box as well so that the audience can kind of ask Whatever they want yeah, to ask. Yeah, I think once I make you presenter. Okay. Uh, so you know, if you're not presenter and I get a question, someone fire a question in if you could, and then I'll I'll okay. see if it's coming up because I'm not seeing anything either. Okay, um, cool. Trying to see. Because what what would be great for me is to kind of make this an interactive experience because the one thing with Tick Strike is we've created a product that presents you with the information, the data. What I'm really curious about is sharing with people how I use Tick Strike and how they use Tick Strike because it has blown my mind the different ways in which people use the software. And it's the right. same information, but they're using it in such a variety of different ways. Um, and that's super interesting to me. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, 
I've always been, I'm sure you know my history of being a big scalper back in the day, but you know, and I've always been, you know, 100% order flow runs the marketplace, right? I mean, that's, Mm -hmm. you can have 40 lines in your chart. That doesn't really matter unless you have real time volume participating there. So I've always been, and I was kind of like you when I was a scalper, I would just have the dome up. I wouldn't even have charts up. I, I didn't even know where we were chart wise. I would just watch order flow come in and I would trade it that way, you know, and, and, I know when you talk about tick strike, you liken it to, you know, kind of pit noise where, yeah. you know, if you, you can imagine yourself in the pit, like those of you that don't know the pit, like imagine, you know, trading places, Eddie Murphy at the end of the, the end of the show. And so it'd be nice size. For- and in the movie where they're, they're in the pit and people are screaming and going crazy. You know, <laughs> I worked at the Chicago Board of Trade for four years as an ARP clerk in the, in the bond pit. And, you know, most guys made their living by, you know, judging the noise when the, yep. you know when the noise would pick up, they would they would know that it's big orders coming in, and you know, and then they'd be standing next to their favorite broker that would just feed them orders. But <laughs> um, you know that that is the I, I'm assuming I've heard you talk before. That was like the that was your idea when you first started this, correct? It, exactly. Yeah. So that that was the core concept that we were trying to kind of gather is, um, you know, the, there's a service that used to be around uh, by Ben Lichtenstein called Traders Audio. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it. But Ben would be on um, the, uh, the the CME at the CME and and essentially playing the audio from the pit and it was incredibly useful. And so it'd be and then, nice the pit has obviously died down over the years, but the core idea with TickStrike was to replicate that concept, but do it in a way that's kind of reliable and not subjective. You know, giving you actual raw information. You know, based upon the actual trades and uh, and uh, order flow that's going through, and and that's that was the initial genesis of it. The the kind of core ideas of it uh, we developed in like the the first financial crisis around that time, and it was absolutely insane because that was such a volatile time. And Tech Strike does its best work when it's volatile, um, because that's when you've got this large influx of orders, you've got these massive moves, the imbalances are absolutely huge, um, and, and you see this this strength behind lots of moves and that's when it's in its element and you you pointed to something quite significant when you first started using TickStrike you mentioned that you used it just to kind of alert you to when something was going on in different markets that's a great way to use the product because essentially what it's doing is helping you avoid times when there's not a lot going on when when volatility in that market's quite low and then when there is some action and there's something happening that's when you draw your attention to it. it stops you kind of over trading um, and you know, tick strike in essence is a volatility discovery tool. You know, that's that's kind of the raw idea of it. It's about listening to that digital pit noise, listening to the flows coming, and listening to when something is actually taking place and when something is actually happening. Right. So, what, what kind of settings do you use? So, for instance, I I don't pay attention. I have all mine set at eleven. Right. So sure. I only want to know when some serious orders are coming in. And I know you used to say in your website, don't don't yeah, yes, December don't top. screw with the settings unless unless you know what you're doing. Right. So <laughs> yeah. what, what, what do you what do you set on? Because, you know, if you have them on one, you're going to be getting yes. sick all day long. Like I already am tortured by these things as a joke. I always kid like you put out a position. Right. So, yeah. You, so say I get short here and then I watch I'm watching this thing rip against me. Then I have another. Um, another uh, uh, sense experience of hearing the move yeah. against me as well. And I call, I, I like <laughs> it to being waterboarded. I've never been waterboarded, <laughs> but I can imagine that's what it feels like. So, you know, I, I have these on a higher setting, yeah. just, just one, I want to know when the real, real money's coming in, but two, yeah. I, I would go absolutely crazy if just firing off on one. So what do you have your set at? So surprisingly, I have it at quite a low setting. I generally have mine at one. Okay. And what, I, what I've kind of learned to do is I have, because um, if I could share my screen with you, I could show you, but I've got a, a similar type of a setup to you. I have- okay, let, me, uh, let me, I'll, I'll let you share your screen because I'd like to see this stuff too. Sure. But it, it really comes down to your style. I mean, it really comes down to what you're looking for. I'm, because I've, I developed this thing and um, you know I've been using it for years and years and years. Um, I, oh, I think I just did something. Oh, here we go. 
Um, okay. I thought I knocked you. I thought I knocked you off when I made you organizer. Uh, I'm thinking that as organizer, you can jump in and share, and I can jump in and share instead of flipping sure. back instead of giving you permission every single time. So, let's see okay. if that works. No worries. Um, there we go. Hopefully, you can see it now. Yeah. Gotcha. Excellent. And I've I've got the questions boxes now as well now, which is amazing. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> Side. Okay. So the key idea to remember with Text Strike is that it's a tool that presents you with the information. How you use that information is kind of almost like how long is a piece of string. This this is such a spectrum of ways in which people use it, such a spectrum of settings. I've met people. Um, that only use settings at 14, 15, that's it. That's what they pay attention to. And I've met people that, you know, they just could not imagine having text strike at a setting above, as a minimum setting above once. There's, there's even people asking me to kind of make it even more granular, to have settings even below one. So it, there's such a wide spectrum of people that are using the software. And that's kind of what's cool is you can calibrate it to your style and the way that you trade. So for me personally, I have everything set at one. And what I'm looking for is, is correlation across all the different markets. Um, and I'm looking essentially very, very simply for them to be all red or to be all green as much as possible. Um, and I want to be alerted to that correlation as early as possible. Um, and that's it. That's, that's kind of the core concept behind how I personally use the product. Um, so, but I, I, yeah, there's yeah. different schools of thought of of when these things are firing off at full for yeah. me and for at full blast, right? So, sure. you, you look for correlation. So I'm assuming you're going with the move when when you know you're you're yes. getting the so. But on the other side of things, so for instance, like if if you see markets that are um, you know say you're looking at relative volume, right, and you see big spikes yeah. of high relative volume mm -hmm. in a down move. Okay, yes, that means that the sellers are being aggressive, but that also means that there is responsive buying there, meaning there are there are obviously large orders that are taking that aggressive selling. So do you when do you notice or do you do you even take into consideration when you see, you know, max so say you're watching ES and you see max buying, max buying, but the market's not really doing, you know, it's not really firing up. Do you ever fade that type of trade or you're always saying go with 100%. So um, th that's what I would describe as a capitulation trade. So you, when, when, the, when you're seeing extreme, it's, see the thing is with this is there is some element of science and there's some element of art to this, right? When you're seeing the 15s and the really high numbers and it's screaming, right? Unless that's a news driven, high emotional intensity driven event, oftentimes it can lead to a reversal, right? Where you're, trading against tick strike but that's what you're seeing is an extreme of emotion and an extreme of trading does that make right. sense yeah and so the, the extreme is where you would look for it uh look for reversals uh you know if, if you've got you know if you look at levels you would look for levels and other corroborating factors to line up with you you know against uh you know in the in the opposite direction but the key thing is this is tick strike is a tool that gives you that underlying information and then it's about you as a trader um, aligning, um, you know, additional kind of levels of probability on your side. So, I, I mean, I assume, do you, do you look for levels and like support and resistance areas and this type of thing, Scott? Is that kind of your way of approaching the market? Yeah, I mean, I look for levels as far as market structure stuff, but my main driver is, uh, it's called the stop iceberg indicator. Uh, and that's through book map. So, you know, book map basically got me into the game. I mean, everyone, most people on here know my story. I was, you know, a okay. million dollar trader one time, and then the algos took over and knocked me out of the game. I hung on for another seven years trying to reinvent my the way I traded because the short term stuff just wasn't working. And then I had to literally get out of the business. 2013, I was introduced by uh, Dr. Britt Steenbarger, who wrote Enhancing Trader Performance. I'm in that book. We've been friends ever since he wrote it. Uh, but he contacted me and said, Hey, uh, there's this new software called Bookmap, and I think it's exactly what you used to, the way you used to view the markets. You want to check it out. So I started looking at it, and the minute I saw yeah. it, I'm like, uh, I'm back. Like, this is what I need. This is how I need to view the markets. 
then they came out. I mean, I thought I was extremely powerful with just the regular, you know, the bubbles and everything else, the buy sell bubbles and things like that, and liquidity, be able to see liquidity in the book. And then yeah. they came out with what's called the SI indicator. So it's a stop iceberg indicator, and it's derived from the CME uh, has released uh, enhanced data called MBO data, where uh, you can actually see order IDs of icebergs uh, and stop runs and, and those types of things. So these developers have found a way to show this stuff on the screen. So that, you know, obviously iceberg, I don't know if you're familiar with an iceberg, I'm sure you are, but you know, for people that don't know, it's, it's, it's hidden orders in the order book. So they have to, with icebergs, you have to show a certain percent. I think it's like 10% of your order in the actual order book, but then right behind it is another 900, you know, say we're talking about a thousand iceberg, uh, there's another 900 orders that are not, you cannot see in the order book until they are starting to get hit, then they populate and, you know, once, once they're filled. So that's a way because, you know, I'm sure all this stuff I'm, I'm assuming, you know, being in the markets for so long, but if, you know, if, if a, a big house or a big bank comes in and puts a thousand lot in the order book, the market's going to run away from it. These algos are designed to run away from these, from these big orders. So that's why they have to hide their orders. But when they get filled, you can see, you know, so let me, let me just take my screen real quick here. We can come back because I wanted to show this. And, um, and this would be good learning experience for you. It's kind of cool that I'd be teaching this stuff that you don't, that you're not aware of. Um, um, struggling with this thing today. Let's see. You back on my screen here? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's, it's so not it's, showing your screen yet, but um, it's not. Hold on. It's not. I'm just uh, yeah, there. We've got it now. Okay. So this is right. Actually, a good example in ES right here, right? So market came down, and you had some buying here. You can see. So the blue bubbles are the buying. The red selling. Very basic, obviously. They started to buy, and look what they ran into. So this it was a see here a 1300 uh sell order iceberg right so meaning there there were hidden hidden orders that they ran into right so the way i the way i trade is then i will find where this spikes right and i will look at this and i'll say okay this started right about here right down here and then it went all the way up to here you can see where the spike is right here right so then i draw a zone so I know this area is very, very important. And it is absolutely amazing how these zones react, like when the market will, you know, finally break out of them and then they, they'll come back, they'll test the exact area and then sell off again, things like that. So I use this stuff, the real-time volume in important areas, right? So the way I would use, use this is I would then go to my longer term structure first and foremost, and I'd say, okay, well, what's yeah. going on? So this looks like this is an attempted breakdown out of this balance area, right? So I know there's huge sell ice right here. So if this breaks down and breaks through that sell ice, I know there's a very good chance just, just from basic market knowledge alone, without even looking at real-time volume stuff, I know that any longs I'm in this area for the last two days are going to be puking out of this, puking their positions out of this, right? So then you couple that knowledge with there was a sell iceberg here. Big money is selling here secretly, right? So it, as long, and then it's not like I just jump in and sell right here, right? I would wait for this to confirm below here. And we have ways uh, in my room, in my trade room of determining if this is what kind of setup this is. So my, I've come up with five distinct setups that I trade off of at important areas to determine which way I want to trade, right? So this could become mm -hmm. a, Titanic setup, right? So just imagine that again. My stuff's very, very technical. I'm being, I'm being funny. It's not. It's so Titanic. You can imagine a ship running into a, an iceberg, right? So this, this would be a Titanic right. setup. This buy orders running into sell ice, right? So once this shows that it can get away from here, that would be a Titanic setup. And the way we determine that is once it gets a full ATR five minute ATR away from this zone, right? So uh, and that's more dynamic where it, it takes in the current volatility. So you can see here, ATR and ES right now is only 1.88 uh, points. So we'll say two points. So I don't know what this is, whether this is a, a Titanic setup until it can get two points away from the bottom of the zone, 
right? And then you can either jump in right there, and this is where I use tick strength, and we'll get into that in a second. Or mm -hmm. this may turn into what what we what I call broken ice, meaning again a very another technical term, right? Iceberg that breaks, <laughs> right? So yeah. and I, once this goes two points above here, then that shows me okay. The, this and pa paper is right more often than not paper the big money, but they are wrong too, and that's when they're wrong they got to puke like everybody else, right? So if this gets two two points above here, then I consider that broken ice and I say these guys are wrong and then I look for retests, you know, in certain situations to then go long, right? So the way, one of the main ways I use and we're using tick strike in the room is, you know, where a lot of times, so say the ATR is like five. Well, you know, a lot of times I don't feel like, I, you know, waiting for five points and the way these work and many times it'll move five points away and then it'll retest, then it'll go. Well, if this moves like a half ATR, say it was five points again, two and a half points below, and I see all mm. these stocks are getting hammered, I'll hop in right yeah. there and there, right? Yeah. I won't wait for full ATR, a full retest, and then you see what I'm saying? So I'm using these, the underlying stocks, which obviously comprise the index that comprise the futures, to determine, hey, which way is this is this going to roll, right? Or when, when I can be whether I want to be aggressive or not hopping in here, right? So for instance, like right now, this is not, you know, this is still bullish where this is not broken out of this balance, right? It tried. So if this comes up and gets through basically right here, this will be violating, this will be back above, this will be a fail breakdown of this balance area, right? That's one of my favorite trades where it tries to break out of balance and no go, and then it gets back above the high volume node, which is the middle of a balance area. That That's one of my favorite trades. And then I also know, hey, this sell ice is wrong, and I will jump in along. And I really want to jump in along if I see them buying, you know, I don't always wait for every single one at one time. You don't see that that often. But, yeah. you know, if I see at least three of these firing off on the buy side, I'm, I'm jumping in long, right? So that that's basically how I trade in a nutshell. Um, but I have five distinct setups. And then the other thing this shows in great detail, you can see here crude from earlier, our stop runs, right? So this is, um, I, I'm not sure if you want to see all this because you're going to get hooked on this and you're going to be like, this is, <laughs> this is the greatest thing I've ever seen, especially when you put it in with your tick strike stuff. So I'm just warning you, you're, you're going down a rabbit hole. You're never <laughs> uh, you can see here, uh, this is right at the open. It, it would be great to get an introduction to the book map guys and just to kind of talk to them and you know learn a bit more about their product and stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so you, know, you have this stop run here mm -hmm. of... And so the other thing too, like all icebergs and all stop runs are not created equal, right? Like, you know, a, a 50 loss stop run means nothing in ES or even crude, but a, a this like this one, for instance, is, you know, 377, that's a ton, right? So I went back and did research for months and months and months before I came out with, I have a, a course that, that teaches these setups, right? So I figured out for each market, what what is a lot what is worth ignoring right so i know in es if i see anything over 150 contracts traded on either icebergs or stop runs that's something to pay attention to right so you can see here this was you know three times that or almost three times that 377 so almost 400 this stop run right so this was a sell stop run if it's below zero it's a you know if it's below the zero line it's a sell stop run so that's this yellow zone right here and you can see where this fired off right that's this spike down here and then i then i draw the zone right so you will be amazed at you know when the markets move away when they come back like they'll tell these zones are support and resistance right? so this is a long explanation of your original question about support and resistance right so then what happened is as you can see this is a pattern that happens all day long here's your stop run here's your move away here's your retest Hold oh, stops tc 193 contracts held it perfectly sold off again and then we came down and then another monster sell, sell stuff fired off this one was 300 it's not monster but it's large um that's this zone and this is what we call the dumb and dumber where meaning usually stop runs are the dumb money the retail trader puke and i tell people all the time don't be offended by that term because i'm a retail trader nowadays as well but you can see here you know when you had this selling if this is going to continue, and that's another one of my setups called a stop and hold, where you see the puke and then it holds and then the big money continues to push it down. Well, in this instance, you had the you had the dumb money puke, right? And it 
no, no one came in and continued to sell it, and then it ripped, right? So this is a good example how you can say with tick strike, you see this come in, and then you see obviously the tick strike meter will be firing. It should be firing off as we go lower if the big money is starting to play. If you yes. get below this zone and you hear nothing, you know it's like a, you know, like you're in church or something with the silence. Well, then you know once it gets above here, you can be a buyer type of thing, right? So there's ways you can incorporate this stuff yeah. in these areas. So again, you you're now introduced to a rabbit hole you will never ever. <laughs> Well, you've introduced quite a few of the ideas that are, are like fundamental in the way people use it. So that I would describe what you've just described, what you said there as divergence, where you've got this low that's taken place, but the, it's not being confirmed by tech strike. It's not being confirmed by the underlying. And right. that's a good opportunity to look for a buy. So most definitely um, a lot, a lot of what you're saying may, you know, makes, in fact, all of it makes total sense. It's kind of, it's really interesting to see, the, these core, idea, core ideas with the correlation being incorporated in it, into it. Like for me, the, a big light bulb moment was thinking, okay, you know what? I can actually see the order flow of all of the underlying stocks and use that as a gauge because the NQ, the ES, you know, a large percentage of those markets is, you know, is weighted towards just a few stocks. Like right now you've got, you know, 50% right. there about the NQ. Right, exactly. 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 So it, it just makes it for like, why would you not pay more attention to the to these stocks? Um, right. But it's a, it's a really interesting way that you, I can see why you have the setting a lot higher. That that makes a lot of sense in the way that you that you use the software. Right. Because I, I just want to know when the big money's flown in because exactly. I can I mean I can see it many times with this, uh, the yeah. iceberg stuff, but I also want to know when these stocks are firing off as well. Yeah. It just helps confirm many things. But it I think feels. this is a light bulb moment for you as well where all your your assumptions with your tick strike for all these years you can actually vis visually see it now uh, yeah. here right so it's like when you when you get your thing and you see it reject you're like oh that was this when you, you know you see an extreme tick and it rejects you're like well that was a stop run right well now you yeah. can see that you can hear it on your on your end and then you can actually see yes that was a stop run right so i think Again, I think the light bulb is really going on for you as well, where you get vindication on all the things that you thought for all these years by listening to it. You actually get to see it now on, on this as well, right? No, it's, it's it's really cool. I mean, the combination is really cool. It, they work quite well together, don't they? Um, oh, I can see yeah. it from what you're describing. Yeah, and I haven't even dug into, like last night I was, cause I was thinking about questions that I've always had and I wanted to ask you, especially with the newer stuff. and. You know, there, there's so many ways that you can use this, like even like retest of these zones where if it comes back and you just don't hear anything, you can use that as your signal where, you know, you can hop right in. Because a lot of times, again, we're, we wait for retests and then we wait for it to move a half ATR and then, then jump in. But you can even say, hey, this comes back, say this comes all the way back into this zone and it's just nothing silence. Well, you can turn around and, and, and then buy it, you know, just without fear because you know there's no real money paper coming in at that time type of thing so there's so many different ways you can use this and that's why mm -hmm. you know i'm excited to hear kind of different ways that you use it as well because again the, the the opportunities are endless i'm assuming with all with both of these i think they go hand in hand to tell you the truth so yeah it definitely seems that way i mean there's there's a bunch of ways that people use it like i've, I've come across people like using it for confirmation of zones and this type of thing and that's initially how i, I used to use it um it's just confirmation of specific zones and this type of thing i was paying attention to but as i've spent more time in my in my invested more time in my trading um i still you know pay because i do my zone research the night before and i have those levels drawn you know uh kind of set up on my dome but i don't have them on a chart if that makes sense Right. So I have like key areas that I want to pay attention to, but for me, it's I, I really focus on what's happening right in that moment. Um, you know, with with the with the, with the depth of market and um, just you know paying attention to the pulses that take place. And Tech Strike is just giving me that those extra layers of confirmation, corroboration, um, you know, momentum. It's helping me you know see and hear what's going on. Uh, and you know, hold on to those trades a bit longer. Initiate trades. I, I kind of use it in a in a mix of ways altogether. 
Right. And, and again, with the, with these zones as well, like you yeah. talking about zones, well, these are real time zones, right? This, these are zones mm -hmm. on steroids, right? So yeah. and, and like if you can get this confirmation, so here, here's a good example of crude, right? So I'll use market profiles, just another way of looking at structure, right? Okay. So, you know, you can see this composite market profile here, right? This was a multi-day. Let's see what the, how many days this was. This was uh, 10, 15. This is multi-day here. So yeah. you know, we come down. Yeah. We have a relatively similar way of looking at the market. It's just that I, I feel like I'm doing it at a slightly, I guess, lower time frame almost. Not, you can't even say it's a time frame because I what 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 you're describing I would describe as like a a, a micro value area where kind of volume has you know dominated to some degree and then price has moved away to it and you're expecting it to move back, right? And then look for an entry of some sort. Is that kind of a good description yeah. of it? Yeah, exactly. Well, okay. so it's like I'll I'll yeah. watch important areas, and then I want to yeah, see yeah. my volume setups right first and foremost. Right. So it's a perfect okay. example where this was the dumb and dumber I just showed you in crude, where we had the stop run. It tried to get out of here. There was no real selling behind it, which you could have gauged by also tick strike. Like once it got once it, that that stop run came in, right? That now this is just this looking at it a different way. This is down here, right? Once the stop run came in, that's this beige zone. And this is this little poke below that we just looked at on the market profile. That's right here. If you tick strike's not firing off, you can be like, and this gets back above here, that's go time on the long side. Because, you know, obviously they, they had a chance. So if, if the big money wanted to sell this thing, because the big money sees this stuff too, right? They have programmers that they can see the exact same thing. So if they wanted to step on the gas here, they could easily step in the gas. So you can be able to gauge like, okay, because again, when, you can see the stuff firing off, but you don't know, hey, are they going to re-engage here? With tick strike, yeah. this below here, and you don't if you don't see anything firing off in crude, it's like, okay, yeah. I can buy this. You can even jump in right here. That's a little more risky. But as soon as it gets yeah. above this zone, you can be you can be a buyer. And you can see this was a yeah. you know, 50, 60 tick mover, you know, more than that. Let's look at that. I mean, that that's that's how I trade, right? So I look for important areas. I look for my volume setups. And then again, you can incorporate, um, I haven't done it as much as far as, the way I just showed you, which I, I again I was thinking about it last night. That's a great way to to judge if that zone is going to break or not. If you're not hearing anything tick strike wise, you know you can jump in as well. But and you can see it worked perfectly. I, I was just getting on the webinar because I went over, I got on live with my room to go over the markets, and this was firing off. And I was thinking about going long here, and I got sidetracked. And of course, it was a it's a perfect trade. But yeah. it, it's just cool to see how well it works, you know, with the setups and also you know with tick strike in certain areas. So um, again, volume volume is what drives markets. And it's the most important yes. thing one can have ever because yep. that's what, it's real time volume that makes the markets go. And some people just don't understand that. They rather just stare at levels or zones. Well, yeah, the zones are important to an extent, but they're not important unless there's not, there's no real money participating there. Or if they're, they're, you know, so that's like a fade. If there's no real money, then you can fade the zones. If real money is pushing it through there, then you can go with it. But either way, volume needs to confirm or not confirm those areas. And that's always been the driver of my trading. I 100% agree with you. I 100% agree with you. I mean, it's a, it's a no brainer. It's what's happening in the now, what's happening in that moment, the volume being picked up, the, you know, the, uh, the way that traders are reacting. Right, and the volume exactly. is coming in. Absolutely. No, 100% with you. All right, you want to field? Uh, so uh, basically, right now, I'm just waiting to see what happens here. You can see this zone is just holding here in ES, mm -hmm. right? So not that I'm so thrilled about going short this market and get my head taken off like I do every day trying to short this thing. Uh -huh. But if this breaks below and I see these firing off, I will hop in the short here because we will be breaking out of that uh, balance that I just sh showed you guys, right? So I will take that if this you know, ends up holding and moves higher, I will play this as a broken eye setup. The other thing I'm looking for now here is that so we're talking about zones, right? So I know crude is in, is in pretty big trouble, uh, at least short term, right? So we'll just go over this quickly. Uh, I didn't show this yet. So Three nice ice for advice, 150 contracts. Um, so you can see here, crude opens up, we gap down from up here last night, we gap down right through the high volume of this, which was also, the high volume note of this major balance that this held the first time. So this this market is in trouble, right? I, I highly doubt that we're gonna do this and come all the way back here. Again, it could happen, but you have to have a thesis, right? The way I trade is 
with my market knowledge and, and understanding structure, I come up with a thesis for the day, right? It doesn't mean I'm always right. I'm not always right at all. But when I am right, that's when I take advantage of it, right? So I, I have my thesis, then I use my, my areas, and then I use the real-time volume and tick strike to confirm those areas, right? So I know this is now turned bearish, at least intermediate term, because we violated both these high volume ones, right? So now I'm looking for area these areas to short this market. Right. For some reason, if this does this and it comes back up here, then I'll change my tune and look for longs. But as of right now, I'm looking for shorts. So, so I know we're real close to the high value note of this guy here. And then if mm. you look at, um, you look at your market profile stuff. This is the most recent composite here, right? So I'd either be watching for a failure where it tries to get back inside this guy and it fails, and I get my volume signal. I'm in short there. Or if this happens to make its way back either to the point of control or the top of here, and I get a, a short volume signal, I will short up there as well. So my thesis is short, and now I look for areas slash zones to trade, but I have to see my real time volume in those areas, right? So I just sit here and stalk this market and I wait and I wait and then it just plays this game. You can see nothing's really firing off, nothing threshold. Yep. This might move a little higher, right? And then then you'll see huge sell ice come in and that'll be my green light to short the market. Or you see a big stop run that doesn't follow through kind of like we saw on the downside, then I'll short, right? So that's how I trade. I look for important areas and then I wait for the volume signals, my, one of my five setups to confirm and then also you, you know, you watch tick strike as well to see if what kind of activity is coming in real time. So that's, uh, it's the ultimate edge. I mean, there's, there's, I, that's, you know, I don't want to put, push my trading style on anyone, but if you're not using, I tell my room basically every day, if you're not using real time volume in your trading oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and using this SI indicator and, and, and tick strike, you, you just don't have all the information, right? You just don't, you could be the, the, the best, market technician chartist on the planet and you still don't have yeah. all the information yeah 100 percent. i mean that's that's primarily why for, for my own trading i kind of just focus on the dome and and tick strike and keep it i i feel like um you know when when people look at the way that i analyze the markets that it, you know it's it's almost seems a bit too simple but i i'm kind of looking at what price is doing um you know where where the volume is and you know i'm looking for kind of pulses i'm looking for strength behind a certain move and i'm looking for correlation i'm looking for the market to be in sync moving together um i'm looking for correlation and confirmation across um, all the major stocks that are in that index um and you know that's uh, uh, and you know breaking out of like an an area that was once important to the market um so i've, I've got to take a look at this book Mac. Thing though sometime because it, it seems it seems to kind of add to that those notions a uh, 100 like i said you're mm -hmm. you're you'll never go back now you're <laughs> you're you're in the rabbit hole so i'm watching gold here right where we had a straight beeline move we're into the top of this and this is this if we do happen to move a little lower this point of control yeah. it's where this thing ripped last time right so i will take longs either basically now, and I'm going to show you the volume setup, or if this moves lower and I get another volume setup down here, either way, I will still look long in this market because not that I like standing in front of freight train moves, but this has moved down so dramatically into an important area. This is an area, and now you can see it on here, right? This is an area where this definitely could bounce, right? So you got this major balance here. This is where this held first time down. Now we're right back in this area. We got through this guy, but this still has to get through this major high volume node. So I may, I will play for one of those if I get the volume signal and it's kind of materializing right now. And I just saw a question in here. Um, let's see a live trade, please. Well, it, I don't just throw on trades for the benefit of anybody, right? I, I have to I have to see a setup. So Jean Locke, I, you know, Hopefully there'll be a trade, but if there's not, there's not, right? I, I just don't trade to trade, right? So that should, nobody should do that. That should be a good lesson for all of you. So anyway, this is a potential long where I will take this long. You can see here, there was a 200 lot stop run, um, almost 200, so let's see what the, 198, right? And I, I just drew that zone. So what's gonna be interesting is we'll watch this, this tick strike here. 
and we'll see how this responds. You can see the last, uh, so I had a couple questions about this here in a second, but I just want to go through this. So this, if this holds and this gets Russell back Ice above here, Bye. Russell Ice I will go along this market. Um, you know, this is a good example where you can use this. If the, I mean, I don't know when this fired off. I got so many questions for you on this stuff in here in a second, but you know, if this, say this comes a little lower and there's just no selling real selling and then it gets back inside here you can just buy it right away you know the way i trade i wait for this zone to fail and i, I i'll get long up here and then i'll put my stop below this zone on atr uh but let's just we'll watch this real time and see how this reacts see if this selling comes back in so a couple questions with this with this meter one a suggestion right where and i don't know how you guys have this set up where so you see this minus 14, right? You're, you're yeah. seeing my screen, Amar, obviously. Uh huh. So I don't know, looking at this, when this happened, right? So this could have happened five, because it hasn't gotten back to that, you know, it hasn't so reset. You so, need a history, yeah. Well, I would love, to, that. that's another one of my questions, but first and foremost, mm -hmm. this needs to have a certain time period where it resets, meaning, after like 10 seconds, it goes back to zero, right? Because this does, does me no good looking at this right now with nothing happening. I don't know if this happened, this 14 selling happened 10 seconds ago or three minutes ago, yeah. right? That That's a big deal. So if there's a way that even user or the user can control it where I say, hey, I want this to reset every five seconds or I want this to reset every 10 seconds. Do you have that kind of option or have you considered that? It's, um, I, I haven't, no, you're the first person to ever ask for that. Um, we, we do have people asking, you know, in terms of that, people, for some reason, most people like the fact that it showed the last, the last uh, recorded output. Now, the, the reset period, uh, let me give that some thought. May, maybe there is something we can do about it. It's just, uh, the, the one thing I'm trying to do with TickStrike is to keep the product as simple as possible. And the more kind of settings and features we add, I think that it, it makes it more and more difficult for people to use. But that's that's quite a simple request. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll give that some thought and and see if we can come up with something. But yeah, that, that, what, that's a big one for me because again, yeah. I need to know when that came in. Or yeah. or another way you can do it is, and this is, goes to my next question, is have a, a time and sales type of window, right? So I would sure. love. So, for instance, I'll go back and I'll do, I'll go back and I'll replay. Bookmap has an awesome replay feature where you can replay this exact stuff and then practice your setups and everything else. Yeah. I would love to see a time and sales feature for these products where I can go back and then compare my zones and say, hey, what what was GC doing on the meter? Was it, I'll bring it up and I'll see it was minus 15 selling all through here, or I'll see it was quiet mm -hmm. all through is there anything in the in the works where I can see a time in sales so I can go back and do some and do some back testing? Uh, absolutely, there is some stuff in the works. Um, so so basically, just just so I completely understand, you're saying time in sales, that kind of style where you've got essentially a list of when the indicator was uh, when uh, tick strike was activated. Is that what exactly. you're asking for? I want to see when it was you know a minus eleven or above, say for instance, yeah. or. Or it could just show all of them. It could show in the negative one, negative one, and the minutes and seconds that it fired. Then all of a sudden, I see, you know, from you know, seven nineteen to seven twenty, it was a negative fifteen, right? That's yeah. gonna that would be awesome for me to go back and look at these areas and say, okay, what was Tick Strike doing? So I saw the market did that. Hey, what did Tick Strike look like at that area when it was rejected? Oh, there was nothing firing off. That's very interesting, right? That's hmm. really, I think that's a close second to this resetting be able to reset or, or have an automatic reset on its own or having user um, friendly where i can set it and then yeah. i want i want to see these areas where i actually going way back i'm talking 10 years i i used to think there was an advantage i would go back and i would draw because all i had was my charts right and i would literally draw i'd watch tick strike and i would hear 15s going off and i would come in and draw little boxes where the 15s went off was kind of my version right. of icebergs or whatever back then. Yeah. Yeah. So if if I can see that information so I can compare it on my back testing and know you're going to start to see tendencies. It's hundred percent, right? You're going to, mm -hmm. that, so that I want that feature. That's number one, I would say. And then the reset to close to I'll, I'll flip flop that. So if you can get that where you can see that information, the past history, 
that would be incredible. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we've definitely got stuff like that in the works, but I never thought of, it's hilarious, given that the, the product is essentially like a digital time and sales, that I didn't think we should just have a time and sales where you have a list that you can go through. Um, we were exploring, like, making this kind of information available on charts. So you right. can kind of have that information there. But Well, well yeah, I mean, that, that's you're... actually better because you could, yeah. you know, you just see it right there, but we're, you know, bare minimum, I would like to just be able to go back and look at, you know, the times when the thing was firing off max or, or not. Yeah, no, absolutely. We can, we can definitely dabble with that. We can, the, the, that's a question that comes up pretty often is like, how can I see a history of it? So it's in the works that the developers are uh, kind of, um, my development team are kind of exploring different ideas. We're exploring with charts. We're exploring you know, different ways, to, but the, the what you've just said there is quite an interesting way of, of looking at it because then you've essentially got the timestamps of when what happened and when it happened, and you can compare those timestamps. So I, I'll, I'll take that back to the team. We might come up with a, like a dual method where you get both, um, and then you know you can essentially do the comparison. So that so that makes a, a lot of sense. Um, let's have a look at some of these questions. How does ticks work with euro dollar rates markets? Um, what is that? Is that GE as a product? I've never, sorry, I've never traded Euro dollar. Are we talking about GE, the futures, or are we talking about Euro USD? I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about GE, PR. Yeah, I don't know who got GE in Tick Strike. I don't remember doing the research, but sorry if, if, uh, if it is in there. Um, it's not something that's come up very much as a request. I, um, but I will, I'll, I'll have an, uh, I'll explore it, uh, PR if that helps and, uh, you know, ha hopefully we can do something with it, but it's not one that, uh, many people have come up with. Yeah, absolutely. Follow up with me on it. Uh, double A M A R at tickstrike.com is the best email to get me on. Um, and, uh, I'd be happy to take a deeper look at it, but we can, as long as, um, the product itself is exchange based and we can access the data because we we have a like a really funny workaround for fx where we gather the data from because fx is not centralized so we gather the data from lots of different brokers and kind of compile it and put it together and it's worked extremely well um so as long as it's exchange based it's a cme product so it will be it should be fine um in terms of like futures explorations this used to be a big problem for us as, as i'm sure scott knows um, but we've we've come up with a methodology where the system automatically switches over to the most voluminous contract at the very moment that it becomes the most voluminous contract. Um, so it's it's a constant comparison, and that's worked really well. I, hopefully, there's no complaints around uh, you know contract roll over time. Which is cool. Um, so guys, if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to ask away. Uh, Jonathan is asking, what's the plan for the Mac supported version? Jonathan, I actually met with the developer this morning. So we're, we're working on that right now. There's there's some little limitations with the Mac um, that the guys are kind of working on and exploring, um, but it, it is definitely something that's in the works and, and coming out. We're even, we're even exploring having an app, a mobile app. Um, so you can kind of take Tick Strike with you on the go. Which is, which is quite cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So hopefully that, they, they put me in a loony bin from, but for hearing that <laughs> being waterboarded all day long. But yeah, that's <laughs> But I, oh. I think it kind of goes back to the uh, the idea that you had when you initially used Tick Strike. You wanted to be alert to the volatility. So I guess, you know, if you're on the go um, and, you know, things go a bit wild, you know, it's nice to be alerted to it. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the ways that people could use it. Um, so I'm going to jump in quickly here and then you can continue to answer the question. So the stop run held. Um, we came down here, a little, a little ice fired off. It wasn't quite threshold for me. It was like 130 by ice. Uh, this was minus 14 at the time. Another thing, Amar, that we really uh, look at, by the way, the crude, crude number's coming out in five minutes. Uh, that was my alarm. But um, another thing that we look at is liquidity. Um, yes. So these are big orders in the book, right? So. Yeah. Most most people that don't know what they're doing or they're newbies or whatever, they're like, hey, look at all, let's see what this actual size is, right? So it's all relative, obviously, but, um, you know, 
most people would say, wow, there's a big bid down there. I want to buy it, right? Like I got that support. It's going to be supporting me. Someone wants to buy down there. It's actually the exact opposite. So it is uncanny. We talk about it all day, every day, in all my webinars, in my trade room. This liquidity is a magnet. This market will hit this liquidity at some point, probably in the next 10 minutes, right? So when you can bring up, you know, this is more for you too, as you learn book map and, and want to trade with it. You know, when you can bring up your markets and you can find bands of liquidity in one direction, right? So this one, you got it on both sides. And I wouldn't doubt if we did this, especially with the Fed coming out today. But like when you're coming up with your thesis, right? So like I said with crude, like, oh, here's my thesis. Um, you know, we got through this high volume nodes. And then you and then you bring up your book map and you look where the liquidity is. And again, I don't know if it's even going to be on here today, but you know if you bring this up, yeah, there's a little bit down here, and you see, you know, just black up here, and then you see liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. You can bet high, high, high percentage that we are going in that to go get these fills because, again, being a large trader, and this is all all my setups are based on my experience as a when I was a large trader, you know, I could put on up to 3,000 e-mini contracts on at one time, right? So all my setups, and back then, I tell the story all the time, but for you, and this is more for you, back then you can see counterparty, right? So I can see exactly who I was trading with. Anytime I even traded a one lot, I would have a little counterparty box on the right over here, and it would tell me exactly who I was trading with, right? So I would see the house number, so I would know, like, my nemesis was 990 Gelber. Right. He was the other big uh, scalper in the, in the market. Or, or I would see Merrill Lynch or FEMAT. Seven, some of these I can still remember. FEMAT was 714. So the point is, I can see exactly who I was trading again, against. And I would also see how they would react. Right. I would see when they would get loaded up from me. And so say I sold a thousand, I'd look over, I'd see 900 of those thousand were one house. So I'm like, OK, well, they, they're loaded up type of thing. Right. So all my setups are based on how big money reacts, including me, when I was either, it was either, you know, in my favor or going against me, so on and so forth. So the, what I'm getting at is this liquidity is the big money and liquidity, get the big money gets what they want, right? They run the show. They have the size to push this market around when they want to, right? So knowing that and the longer it's in here, the higher percentage it's going to get their meaning, they're willing. So if something comes out right now in the world and this market just rips right through this or right through this, they're willing to get filled. So that's how you know they want that fill, right? It's not a game. It's, this isn't an algo game where the liquidity is just popping in like you can see it right here, popping in and out. The longer it's been in here, the more they want to get filled and the more they will get filled. So they will find a way at some point to cause a stir and to push the market right into their orders. And that's, I tell this, you know, the, this example all the time. This is the game I used to play, right? I would have like a thousand lots sitting here, right? So to say this is the ES, obviously. And I would start to sell a little bit. I just like, you know, dip my toe in the water. I'd sell like a couple hundred and I'd see what would happen. And if it would like react and it wouldn't bounce back, I'm like, oh, okay, there's no buyers. Then I would sell another 200, no response. Then I would just lay on the gas and I would sell another 800. Then retail traders would see the big activity and then they would jump on my coattails and it would push it right into my waiting thousand lot. It would, I would, you know, I would have a thousand, I would sell a thousand and I would fill, get filled on my resting thousand make a quick 50 grand and then wait for my next opportunity. And that is exactly what's happening nowadays too, right? So that's mm. that's that's why it's really important to know where this liquidity is when you're coming up with your thesis because it helps you, you know, it, it'll help you stay on that side of the market. And then it, then you use your real-time volume, the tick strike, so on and so forth to find the best areas to get in for a ride to that liquidity. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure, uh, definitely. Makes sense. What, what's kind of curious to me is um, you described they. Who, who in your view is the they? They That's is the big of, money, right? The, 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 the big players, right? So the big okay. funds. The, you know, every market has two or three really big players, um, yeah. but it, it's just the big money. It's the guys that are willing to put in 141 gold contracts and have it just sit there, right? Because if yeah. something happens and we run right through it, they, they want their fill, right? So they're willing to let us sit in there. That's they. It's the big money, and you know. I know like retail traders are always like they they're out to get me. It's not that kind of thing. It's it's okay. it's the big money. And trust me, yeah. I, I I know this for a fact because I was the big money, right? And I know the yeah. games they play and they still play them. You know, they they supposedly, you know, cracking down on spoofing, so on and so forth. They've cracked down, but it's still going on and the you know, game playing, it's it's just all you know, back in the day, 
like I was telling you that the, the Galbert guy we used to go head to head. I, I don't even want to go down that story channel because I'll get upset and probably break a screen. But he was the ultimate market manipulator in the history of the world. He actually got fined four years ago for spoofing. He got banned from trading for like a year. So, but back then he was all all out, like just literally crossing his own orders, making the market appear to be doing something that it's not. So. The point is, it, it happened then, and it ha still happens to an extent now. So, in what I tell my room every day, going back to the they, like you know, like I said, traders, they they get mad at oh, they're doing it again. They're so it's either you can hate them and and and, and let it affect your mental state, or if you can't beat them, join them, right? So it's like I know what they're going to do, and I know they manipulate the market. Well, if you know where they're at and what they're trying to do with either liquidity or the setups. Right, it's the most important information you can possibly have in in your trading, right? And then you use that information based with structure and stuff like that, and that's how you come up with a sound trade plan that you know that is real world and makes sense, right? So that that's that that again, and it, this isn't my setups and what I'm telling you guys, and it, it's not hypothetical. I used to do it myself, right? I used to play those games. I didn't. I definitely spoofed nonstop, right? That's when it was it was completely legal back then. I never crossed my own orders and things like that. But um, it's just the games that I used to play, and I know that are still being played in, in in the markets today. And again, if you can't beat them, then join them, right? If you if you know what they're doing, then ride their coattails, type of thing. <clears throat> so that that's what my trading is based off of. Very interesting. And and in terms of like the visual representation you've got there, what does spoofing actually look like? Should I see those red bands kind of getting darker and lighter as as yep. the yeah, orders yeah. are taken off and stuff. Yeah, let's go. Let's, I'll, I'll give you a real time examples right now, okay. <laughs> like, like right here. I mean, it's not necessarily like you know, it's hard to prove it's spoofing for the for the exchanges. Like you can see, you right. see how it's like lighting up. This is just just put it in, put it, put it in, put it, put it in. You have to show that there's no intention to get filled, which is very very hard to do, and that's why it's very hard to crack down on the spoofers. But this is liquidity I don't pay attention to. So you see how this is like lighting up like a Christmas tree, right? It's like, you see this right here, how it keeps lighting up like mm -hmm. that, right? It's just it's just them putting orders and pulling. Putting, I don't pay attention to that liquidity at all. I pay attention to this type of liquidity here, or you know, if this was in this whole time, that's liquidity I, take, I pay attention to. I do not, pay, this is just algos screwing with people, right? You, people are just getting algoed right here. So if you know the difference, and you're not you're not not freaking out. This is just like right here. They just just threw a hundred lot in, and then they pull it right. They're just trying to kind of scare it down. See how they just pulled it, and then they'll chase it, and then they'll pull it. I don't pay attention to that. I pay attention to this like kind of liquidity, right? So that's uh, yeah, super interesting. Super. Yeah, interesting. I, I feel like I'm I'm a simpleton in in comparison. I was going to say your mind must be blown by all this, like seeing it in this <laughs> way presented in this fashion, right? And a lot of truth. <laughs> when they first yeah, it's, this, yeah it's, just, it's just I, I've kind of I've kind of learned to keep things for me as simple as possible the less I look at I mean that's one of the reasons why tick strike exists it's just keeping what I look at what I pay attention to as limited as possible so that I'm able to make you know decisions you know based upon that information and, and make the decisions quickly and, and this type of thing but super interesting Super interesting. Yeah, it's just I'm the same a way. different view. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same way. That's all I preach to my room is I keep it simple, stupid, right? I, I have always yeah. been that way. And I try to keep it as simple as possible. The more things you introduce into your trading, the worse trader you're going to be, in my opinion, because you, you can't make decisions because you're always going to have conflicting data, right? So, um, so you see Absolutely. here, I mean, see how, so for instance, say you wanted to go short gold, right? So we came up here. Here's yeah. a perfect retest that we got an ATR below here, right? So ATR is, um, this is exactly how we do it in my room. So ATR is 26 ticks, 20, you just move the decimals, 25.7, so 26 ticks. We definitely got an ATR, we definitely went 26 ticks below here, right? So we're this the bottom of the zone is right around 44, we went all the way down to, I'm just taking the last two digits here, we went all the way down to 08, right? And what do we do? ATR, here's your retest, here's your failure. So for instance, if you wanted to get short, you could have gotten short on this setup. This is a stop and hold. You had your right. stop run, that held, that pushed lower, came back, retested lower. So the way you can use tick strike is that as that came back on here, if you didn't hear yeah. any buying, which there wasn't, you could just turn around and go short, right? And put your, you can, then you can put your stop right above the zone. Yeah. 
type of thing. I'm just giving examples on how you can use tick strike. Absolutely. So I, I mean, know for you, a fact when this came back, there was no, there was no buying, and then you can yeah. jump in and short. You you've already hit on like the, a few ways to use tick strike. So the the big one that you've kind of uh, focused on quite a bit there is divergence where the underlying stocks um, don't confirm that particular, like the high that's been made there. So that's a really, really powerful way of using it. And it's really cool to see incorporating that into your strategy. The, the other one that you've hit upon as well is the correlation. Obviously you're looking for alignment between the different markets and a sim, you know, TickStrike gives you a simplified representation of that information with Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and you know, YM and everything else and a simple, simple kind of alignment of those different markets. And then um, you briefly mentioned capitulation, which is kind of things going to the extreme when you see everything going absolutely nuts and you know stops being taken out the whole shebang. Um, that's kind of very, very powerful to pay attention to as well. So you've kind of, even with your methodology, you're exploring a lot of the ways that you can use tick strike. And, and of course, when you enter the trade, you're looking for momentum, right? You're looking for the meters to light up, to be correlated, to be heading, you know, in your direction when you've entered that trade. And I'm just curious as to how you would look to exit a trade. Uh, well, exit wise, uh, you know, I'll have, well, first and foremost, the number one thing is my stops, right? So, you know, once I get in a trade, I'll use an ATR. So say, so say this does end up breaking here. I know that's a fat chance, especially in equities. You know, we, we actually get some real selling in these markets, but say this thing broke and I got in, well, I put my stop in ATR and I go a little outside the ATR, ATR above that zone, right? So I, I'll look at the ATR. The ATR right now is 2.4, so we'll say two and a half points. I usually go about a point more than that, so I'll say three and a half points. So the top of this zone is at 18 quarter-ish. So I would go 21 quarter, 21 and a half would be my stop. So I would put my stop up here, right? And then I would play for areas below. So meaning, um, important areas below. So the number one, as far as market structures and stuff, I would be looking, watching for prior tops of balances, high volume nodes of balances, right? So the top of this most recent balance here that we launched from is right there or the high volume nodes. So that those prices would be right around 41.06 or 46.06-ish. And then the high volume node meaning is right in the area, right? Right around 45.96. So those would be areas that I would watch closely. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, the other things that I watch, I'll, I'll look at this to see. And many times they just match up perfectly, right? So we'll look here, see what it looks like. So the main area here on the market profile is down here near 45 or 46.02. So but, you know that in that zone, 46.02 to 40, 46.06. I would watch to see, you know, if it comes down there and I start to see the blue bubbles, right? So say this thing starts to rip down here and then I see, and then I, I don't want to get into all this, but these are spot gamma levels. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's option stuff um, where dealers have to hedge and you can see it's right around that 4606 area. So if this comes down here and I start to see blue bubbles, then I'll get out of, I'll get out of a piece, right? Or down here near the O2, I'll get out of a piece. That's one way, I, one thing I look at, the other thing we look at in my room, um, we use uh, what we're called Ludwig levels. These are very powerful. She's, right. uh, you know, she doesn't give up her secret sauce here, but uh, I, they're pretty certain that it's based on market profile, volume profile, pivot point type thing. She's got like 11 inputs, but I'll watch these areas um, for the blue, the blue lug and the red lug. Like you can see here, they're they're pretty. We call them that they're they're magic. Like we got guys in the room who are like, I've been trading for 50 years. I've never seen anything like this, right? So you can see it came down here and we just bounced, right? We try, 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 no. So these are potential targets too, where if the market really gets motor and I will pay attention to those areas and I really pay attention to extreme deviations of VWAP, right? So when everything mm -hmm. matches up, so say we start selling off here, you can see right now, it's over here. <clears throat> so say we start rolling down and we know that 4602, 4606 area, um, actually that, that was yesterday, sorry. So extreme standard deviation this is a really tight trading range but so say this was yesterday and we got rolling down here i really pay attention to so this is the daily value rate just one standard deviation from vwap uh one and a half two i'll really pay attention to the to the extremes especially if they're confluent like with a lug you know things like that to to piece, piece out of my trade and then i'll always keep try to keep at least one or two on until i see an opposing setup 
right? So we come down here, I may peace out, but I always keep one on because it could obviously keep going until I see a bullish setup on my SI indicator. And then once that fails, you know, meaning bullish, then I'll get out of the, the, the final position. Um, and sometimes I'll even flip it to go long, right? So uh, that that's how I trade personally. Okay, that's interesting. Very cool. Very cool. I know it seems like a lot. It's really not. You know, it is pretty simplified, but I, I know I'm throwing a lot at you. But I guess in the now, it's, it probably feels quite quite simplified in the way that you put it together. We've got we've got a few questions. Do you mind if I take over the screen share? Because I, I think sure. uh, I think as Abby's not completely clear as to what tick strike looks like. Um, so I'm just going to try show my screen. Got it. Hopefully that's coming up for everyone. Yep, I got it. Yep. So, so Abby and whoever else is wondering, this is basically tick strike. If you ignore the charts, in fact, I'll minimize the chart for a second. Um, this is the product itself that we're talking about. Essentially, what it does is, uh, you know, turn order flow into a visual and sound-based representation. You're probably hearing the ticking in the background. Um, that's that's my tick strike. Can you can you hear it, Scott? Got you there? Okay, we might have lost Scott. Um, but the, the clicking and popping, hopefully you can hear it. Awesome. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just ran out of the room for a second. I was just going to run okay. the bathroom. What, oh, what did you ask? Sorry. Oh, no, it's not a big deal. We, I, I got confirmation from, from a couple of the guys. So, so okay. the, the clicking, and popping like and clicking and everything, no worries, bud. Uh, the clicking and popping and everything that you hear is basically a simplified representation of the order flow of that particular market, right? So, um, you know, the market that I look at the most is, you know, NQ or ES. And, you know, we've basically got the, the charts up for this and you can see the flow. So someone earlier on asked, you know, if we can turn the meters all the way down, this is basically how I have things set up. Um, you've got level ones across all of these meters. It means that it's a lot more active and you kind of have to train yourself to ignore it sometimes um, when you don't, you know, when there's not a setup for you or, or, or not something that you're paying attention to. Um, that is not an ice cream van you can hear. If you can hear something in the background, <laughs> it's the food truck turning up at the office, which is hilarious. But what we've got um, is basically a simplified view of the feed from Apple, from Amazon, from Microsoft, uh, from the from the different ticks, um, all together in one place. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan was just say he heard the ice cream truck. Um, it's it's always hilarious when I'm speaking to someone and that that thing turns up, um, and you know you're able to basically see the flows of these things together in a simplified way. That's the core of what TickStrike does, and that's kind of how Scott is using it. But what's interesting about Scott's usage is that he's applying a lot of the core ideas with TickStrike, like the the divergence idea and the correlations idea and momentum, and it's it's quite interesting to see you know uh, someone you know who who's just purchased the product, you know, take it in that direction as well. So that's pretty cool. But um, this is the main console of TickStrike. Hopefully everyone can see it. Um, and these are all the individual instruments that we cover. So there's a bunch of effects. There's crypto, there's futures, um, there's individual stocks. Um, and we've got a load of ETFs. Um, so if you're trading crude, there's a bunch of ETFs that you can look at as well as kind of CL and um, uh, Brent and a few others. And then there's the internals. So guys, if you've got specific questions about the software, feel free to ask away now and we can kind of throw some ideas around. But um, there's a, a couple of interesting little bits and pieces I want to show you. Um, one, of the, one of the big reasons why I've tried to break down the individual kind of stocks and use them as part of the analysis is just what I'm showing you right now. This is basically a heat map of the NASDAQ. And you can see just how dominant Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon are. I mean, they dominate near enough. Just just those four stocks is probably around 40% of the of the Nasdaq. Um, it's really important to pay attention uh, in a quick and easy way to the flows of those particular markets, you know, to help you make your decisions. Um, and that's kind of what we've been trying to do is is simplify that information so you can see what's happening and. Scott mentioned it in terms of when um, there's a low taking place 
and it's not being confirmed by different stock different stocks um there's a divergence there um so it's it's really interesting to see that kind of analysis um a couple of questions coming through okay uh i also don't use text right but suggesting in the future but yeah um so what jonathan's asking is there some way to kind of align the different uh, meters together so there's some guys have come up with like a hack to be able to put that together like there's a piece of software that they use and it kind of squares everything up but one of the updates that we're working to working on is basically a kind of tool that allows you to stick the meters together or like a snap kind of a tool where you can just you know snap them all in place um to save where you want them it is it is a little bit annoying i'm totally with you jonathan um it's just it's just working working them up chain them up yeah absolutely um in our kind of community group some people have come up with a hack and a, and a few different methods and ways to do that which work quite well um and uh, a lot of a lot of the guys have done that and that's that's pretty awesome but the the overarching idea with it is is to kind of help you see inside in a simplified way of what's happening in the market and you know the individual underlying stocks the underlying markets you know correlate them corroborate them we've got some cool features that we're you know working on that that are on the way um that will help a lot more with the correlation side of things so that's pretty exciting you know there's a there's a bunch of cool things that are kind of in play and uh you know going to be heading heading your way in the near future but the software itself is really straightforward um, you've got volume control you just turn the meters on and off as you need them um and uh add them add them to your screens um and there's a there's a bunch of ways to use it steve's asking do some people use this to scalp they do steve so um there's a there's a bunch of people that use a scalp and it, i guess it depends how you define scalp as well because there's scalping for like you know a tick or two on say the nasdaq and then some people just also define kind of you know going for 20 ticks as a scalp as well so it really depends on how you scalp, scalp the markets so exactly so you know if you're 8 to 16 ticks on the nasdaq yeah you, you would definitely be able to use this because you you would look for a pulse a move and then you would look for tick strike to kind of give you you know corroboration of, of the correlation whether you've got apple and, and everything else moving with you so there are most certainly people that use it for scalping we're actually exploring um making it even more like right now the the settings go from one um one to uh one to 15 and we're exploring adding some additional layers even below one for for the real hyper scalpers but it's just one of those one of those things that we want to explore and jonathan you've you've made a really interesting point there um uh, i would suggest the ability to create your own aggregate products for example for example if you choose nq es and rty i would need a new aggregate window that shows the correlation of those sorry i can't see the rest of what you've written but we we're actually working on a tool like that where you can essentially pull products together or, or pull instruments together um, into a single kind of meter, exactly what you've, saw. I've just seen the rest of what you've just shown. Uh, yeah, exactly, a single meter, but this is a product that's under development. And, you know, we're, we're constantly and continually trying to improve it. Um, you know, you guys are like, if you do, you know, want to join us on the journey, you're, you're part of the early adopter phase. So we've got the product, product working, we've got it, you know, we've got a large base of users. Um, we're getting amazing amounts of feedback. People love the product. But now it's about refining it, improving it, and you know that's one of the core things that I'm, you know, hoping to do today. But um, Jonathan, in answer to your question, we most definitely will have a feature like that. That's something that I've wanted for a while, um, and it's just figuring out the details of how we correlate those two instruments together and turn them into one. The mechanism that people use to be able to do that, but it, that's definitely on the books and definitely something we want to do in answer to your question so guys i've got um um just a, a couple of things awesome once i get back uh sorry one other question 
Okay, do you to, that's great. Yeah, do, do you want to just mention that once I get it on Mac, I can also provide more pragmatic suggestions. That's awesome. That would uh, that would be very helpful. Um, you know, and we we definitely want to you know put that together. Do do any of you guys like? I'm sure there's a bunch of people that have already purchased Tick Strike. Um, one of one of the big ways that people seem to like using it as well is trading uh, economic news events. So, you know, you say, for example, we've got NFP coming up this week, right? Where the NFP data comes out and then after it's come out, you're trading the post spike volatility. Um, there's a bunch of people that seem to like doing that because it's, you know, you kind of know when you're going to trade, you can pick it up, you know, at 8.30 Eastern, you know, after NFP or GDP or, you know, retail sales and this type of thing. Um, there's a bunch of people that kind of have used the product in that way um, just to help them listen to the volatility and whatever's taking place. So it's a cool way to use it um, if that's what you want if that's what you want to do. Um, let me just throw some stuff at you guys. Uh, a, a really interesting way of using it relation trade trade management. Um, you know if you want to, I, th I think Scott alluded to this is letting those winning trades run and cutting those losers short. If you're hearing, you know, screaming, buying on your side and you're long, you hold on to it a bit longer, right? Um, and it makes it simple and straightforward to kind of keep hold of that trade a little bit longer. Uh, and then if you hear, you know, the, the tick strike going against you, it makes it easy for you to just, you know, jump, cut and run from that particular trade. So it just makes, the process of letting winners run and cutting losers short a lot more objective. That's one of the, the, the big things that the product brings to the table is that level of object, objectivity that's quite difficult sometimes in trading um, when you're looking at like a variety of information and, and tools and, and uh, all of this kind of stuff. Um, let me just try and widen this chat window. Uh, Kendall's asking, are the settings by instrument or just a blank, blanket setting? So you, you can, so there's a, a default blanket setting, and then you can individually change each instrument. So you can change the colors of of the of the of the meters. You can do a, a bunch of different things and have individual settings. One of the things people do as well is like um, when they're scalp when they're looking for a trade, they will have the sensitivity quite high. So they'll They'll have it, you know, um, at number one where you know it's very, very sensitive. And then as soon as they've entered the trade, they'll just turn it up to say 11 or 12, you know, so that they're only alerted when you know there's something crazy that they need to pay attention to. It really comes down to your style of trading and and what you're looking for and and the mechanisms that you have in place in terms of how you look at the market and how you trade. So, you know, the, the core things that TechStrike does is, you know, give you the advantages of the pit, which is the pit noise side of things that we were talking about. It lets you analyze correlations in real time so you can see the flows and everything that are happening in real time. And it lets you look at, you know, discover volatility. So depending on the setting that you have, you will hear TechStrike going nuts when there's volatility in play. Um, and that makes it extremely, extremely powerful. So guys, feel free to keep asking your questions. I, I've got a little, uh, hopefully a cool offer for you guys today. So when we first launched TickStrike, the product was 39 bucks a month for like a single instrument, for just one instrument. And if you wanted everything, it was 199, um, which, which you know, was a, was a really good deal at the time. But we've changed things up recently. And now to get everything, the whole shebang, all the markets that we cover, which is, you know, the futures and everything else that I showed you, it's $99 a month. Um, but whilst we're in this development phase where we're trying to improve the product and grow it and build it and make things, uh, make things happen with it, we've, we're hopefully offering you guys some, some cool deals. So if you, you know, in the old product purchased for $199 a month for a year, it would cost you about $2,400. Um, if you purchase the 99 bucks, it'd cost you about $1,200. Um, which is which is 50% cheaper than it was before, which is amazing. Um, but right now we've got an offer where you can get it for 497 a year, which is a, a saving of 79%, which is great. Um, and 
you know, that's that's very cool. What we've also got is a, if you had the product for about five years at 199, it's about twelve thousand dollars. Um, and even at the current price of 99, it costs you about six grand, um, you know, which is still very reasonable, but, you know, for, for this type of product. But we've got an amazing offer for everyone that's here today of 997 for lifetime access. If you use the URL uh, tickstrike.com forward slash Polcini, um, you, you'll be able to sign up for that. And if you've got any questions about the offer, feel free to, to ask away. It's um you know it's hopefully a no-brainer for you all um if if you use the product for a while you don't like it you can always ask for your money back no problem at all uh, most people that like it especially in the style that you guys are trading working with scott i think you'd really enjoy the product i think it would lend a lot of value to uh, what you're trying to do um the markets that we cover on it you know it's a broad base of markets um, and you know you've got obviously all you know the major futures, so pretty much everything you can think of in the futures in terms of the FX and the energy side of things and the metals and the grains, all of that is available. But we've got obviously the crypto side of things that's pretty new. We've got FX. Um, there's a bunch of markets that you can look at, um, and it's a simplified way of analyzing and looking at what's happening in the market, giving you like a real-time view of the order flows in specific markets. Um, you know, to help you with correlations, to help you adapt to whatever's happening in the market at that given point in time. So hopefully you find this incredibly useful. Um, I'm going to put into the chat that URL as well, um, tickstrike.com. Oh, is that coming up in the chat? Hold on. Hopefully that's coming up to all. Do you see it, bud? I don't see it. Um, I typed it into the questions window and into the chat. All okay. Sorry, I've got to make a slight change. Then let's try that again. Six strike. I'm in. I'm in questions. You think I know how to use this thing by now? I've only <laughs> six months. Yeah. Um, I just I, I just don't take questions in here. They're usually through my room, so <clears throat> through the Discord room. Yeah. So so Jonathan said the link is up and it's showing. So guys, go for it. By all means, sign up. Um, I think we've gone through a lot of like the big questions um, in in terms of it, but we are continuing to develop this product. There are lots of cool things that we're adding, um, and your feedback it helps us kind of shape it, help it evolve, um, make it a lot more useful. I mean, it's useful as it is. Uh, people find a lot of value in it, but it, it adds another dynamic to it um, if we have this continuous stream of feedback. Um, so, you know, hopefully I've made it a no brainer for you with the offer that we have in place at the moment. So by all means, guys, do sign up. Um, God, I'll, I'll kind of leave this open for you to kind of, uh, introduce to you guys and get their feedback and, and and this type of thing but you know hopefully it's a no-brainer yeah i mean you know, like i said i've been using it on and off for 10 years i was always waiting for you to update the thing and now it's been, it's <laughs> like updated. now it's like updated on steroids right so <laughs> um, especially yeah. with all, all this stuff let me um take this screen real quick and i'm going to show a couple sure. setups you can hop off here uh so quickly though, a couple more questions for me. So, yes, you have you have your internals, right? So, wh what are you using to gauge? Obviously, there's no order flow in those, no. like you know, ADD or and the and the VIX. I mean, there there is a VIX futures market. I'm not, I don't think you're. I think I heard you say before you don't use that. So, what are you using to gauge the the flow? So with 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 the um, internal side of things, we've come we've just taken a completely different approach and essentially gathered from from the from the markets that we do have access to we've tried to deconstruct it and correlate the information does that make sense 
So we, we've got markets that we can get access to, like the, the ES, the NQ, and, and all these types of things. And then we've got the tick and the trend and all these things themselves. And we've looked at how those markets are correlated with each other, the connections that they have. And then we've extrapolated from that connection and the real-time movements of the tick, what that information represents. Does that make sense? So it's, like I said, it's experimental. It's it's uh, what we're trying to do is try to replicate that same information, but the the source of it, the, the amount of information that we can get from it in terms of obviously flow and this type of thing is extremely limited and non-existent. So we, right. we've basically replicated that information to represent it. Um, so it's not exactly the same as say the S&P futures. It's not the same as the Nasdaq futures, but it's kind of correlating those two bits of information together. And the feedback we've got on it has been really good. I mean, people have found it extremely useful. Yeah, I mean, the VIX definitely, um, you know, first of all, I see, I've see noticed the ADD basically runs in tandem with the RTY, which is yeah. kind of, I know they're different stocks than, than the, you know, than the main indexes, but it's mm. pretty, uh, indices, but it's it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty weird how they just fire off at the same time. But I have noticed the VIX. So why don't you use, um, or have you seen any correlation with the VIX futures? How come you don't use that as a meter? Oh, it's, it, in terms of the VIX, is it's part of it's part of the equation, but it's uh, it, it's essentially how the, the tool itself, ex, you know, the algorithm how it analyzes the data across those different inputs, and it puts it together. Right, I'm saying, have, you, have you thought about using VIX futures for I a think meter? We have got VIX we, oh, you do? I didn't, didn't think. I didn't even know that was available. I, I was just yeah. using the internal VIX. Um, Oh yeah, VX. You're right. Sorry. Yeah, we have we have got that. Um, we we've just tried to you know try and find the different things that people are looking for and 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 create you know for for the stuff that's not immediately available like the internals. The internals was just something I wanted. I've always wanted myself, and you know we, I tried to come up with a cool way to do it. And so far it seems you know the feedback that we've got from people is that it works pretty well. Um, so it's it's a it's an experimental direction with it. Cool. Yeah, I, I I noticed it just using the regular VIX. I didn't again. I didn't know the futures were even available, but yeah, I noticed you get a lot of uh, sustained moves when that thing's firing mm. off. You know. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Scott, I'm afraid I've got to hop off to uh to my next meeting. Um, okay. but it's been a it's been a pleasure talking. Um, and uh, let me know you know if there's any questions at all. Uh, Amar at Tick Strike is the best way to get hold of me. So I'll, I'll drop my email in the chat for anyone that wants it. Um, right, I'm going to take control of the screen. Uh, Go for it. Through Dice Iceberg, Cell Alert at CL 152 Comfrax. see if I can show a live trade here. <laughs> I was I was kind of hoping there this it was kind of dead like this, just so you, we were able to talk and get questions yeah. in. But hopefully we can. Uh, I'll try to put on a trade here, but if you got to go, understandable. No worries about it. Uh, really good to talk. Um, and guys, you know, do check out the link and you know, welcome your feedback. Yeah, thanks for hopping on here. It's no very worries. informative. I, you want know, to learn some more stuff as well. So that's uh, this product's always had a lot of promise. So I, I'm glad to see you're yeah. taking it by the horns and expanding it and, and enhancing it. So it's. Uh, I've always Absolutely. loved it, and I love it even more now that I can use this information <laughs> with, with the visual stuff that I'm seeing as well. So it's awesome, awesome, really yeah, great. You can work on those it. things that I asked, like the time and sales type of thing, and then the yeah. meter, and that, and that that would be huge just for me alone. You know, hundred percent. We'll, we'll we'll definitely try and make these things happen. Awesome. All right, buddy. Good to talk to you. Catch you guys later. Appreciate it. You guys want to hang on? I'm I'm gonna take control here real quick and see if it's on a trade. Crude's uh. An interesting area. You guys got my, uh, you can see my crude screen here, I'm assuming. All right, so we can see where we're at here in crude. We're breaking down out of this thing. So I will take a short on this uh, sell ice. Thanks, Jay-Z. Um, right here. Breaking down. Try to get back into this guy. No go. This is the bigger one. This is starting to sell off again. This I was looking for an area to, to go short. There was one up there while he was talking, and I 
basically missed it because I stepped out of my office, of course, like usual, but you can see here there was a Dumb and Dumber up here. It worked perfectly. Hopefully you guys took this. I think it's one of my room members was talking about sentence right here. 160, it's almost 200, immediate, no follow through, done. So I've had a few missed trades today, but to be expected when I'm doing this webinar with him, but <clears throat> I wanted to get that out there because I think it's a useful product, obviously. All right, so what happened here is I'm gonna I'm gonna just erase this zone because it's it was a while ago and we kind of traded up and through it. So and this just came in. So you can see this ice here, the sell ice is spiked to 142, and then you had another 119. So this is over 200 sell ice. Um, so I'm not worried about just jumping in here. I'm gonna wait for this to move away and then retest because crude out of all markets does it the absolute most. Um, see, I'm just trying to get all these prices in. So you see that? I'm gonna change this color to black for sell ice. And I will short this. That didn't work. I think I got an extra one here. All right, hopefully I can get these drawn before they sell off. There you go. Also, um, for you non-room members, uh, there is a zone drawing add-on for Bookmap in the works. I just talked to Bookmap yesterday, and uh, so it's basically going to be where I draw my zones, and it, auto, it will auto-populate on your chart. Um, so hopefully that'll be out soon, sooner than later, so you don't have to sit here and spend your whole life drawing zones like I do. All right, so as I expected, this thing didn't even get a full ATR below here, and it's, it's kind of retesting this zone. Um, but what I will do here, if this if this comes down and starts to roll out of here again, and we see some major selling, I will, uh, I'll just hop in, at least give you guys one trade before you go. And again, you know, this was supposed to be a live trading webinar, one, the Fed's meeting today, and there were, there, I missed a couple opportunities, but I'm not, you know, I'm not, I just don't throw on trades to trade, right? And then you guys should be doing the same thing. I look for specific setups, specific areas. If it's not there, it's not there. And that's, we talk about this every day in my room. You got to learn to be a sniper and wait for your spots. If you're just haphazardly throwing in trades, you're you're going to blow out your account, period. So we have structure and, and reasoning and rules for taking trades. And there has been a couple of opportunities in Golden Crew today, but um, other than that, it's been pretty dead. You know, equities, this ES is still sitting in the zone that, from an hour and a half, basically. So, and that's what you can expect on Fed Day. Trust me, once the Fed comes out later, you'll see some movement. Um, all right, so let's get this set up where I'm going to short that. Just want to take a look where we're at on this VWAP stuff. We are at extreme standard deviation, but this is one of those days that can definitely turn into, call it a hugger, where it hugs a deviation. Uh, I think we can make it down to here, just based on all the structure stuff that we talked about. This has violated some major areas to the downside. Uh, I was hoping for, I didn't really want to chase a trade, and this is actually a, a really important area where this could bounce one more time. If we can get through these tails that led to these launches, then this thing's really going to motor down, I think. Um, but I was hoping for a move back into these areas to short. I just didn't get it. There wasn't, again, there was that dumb and dumber up there, but I missed that one. So and you can see it came right back to the baby lug, we call it there. That was your dumb and dumber. There's quick 70 ticks. Um, I'm watching GC closely here as well. <clears throat> so as Amar was talking, you had a major stop run again right here, sell stop run. We we're talking about this liquidity below. It did not fill this liquidity. Um, so I'm, I'm expecting this will come back for one more, one for one more swipe down, hopefully get one more stop run. And then I'm going to look to buy it um, because this is a very extended move into an important area that I showed earlier, but just quickly, you can see here, um, one, the blue lugs down here. That's great. Extended. These are the, some of the best trades out there, right? Extreme standard deviation of VWAP, 
So minus two, blue lug, and market profile wise, you can see we did bounce off this point of control this first time. That's where this ricochet last time. I have a feeling it might come down and do one more swipe down to the bottom of this and then go again. This is a straight line move. Not that gold that can't keep going, but especially before the Fed, I, I I would be very surprised if this thing could pound through the bottom of this and keep going before the Fed comes out. Again, somebody knows something. We were talking to my room as usual. You don't, you never see this type of move before the Fed comes out unless somebody knows something. Um, but I will be, I will take a long, you know, off of this area, especially if we get one more move down on that liquidity, blue lug, and I get a, a volume set up. Um, even if I don't get a volume set up, say if this comes down here, we already had the volume set up. Right, so this can retest the zone, which is about to. This already happened. This can come a little lower, fill this liquidity. This would not be a full ATR below this zone, so it wouldn't invalidate this zone as a bullish signal. And then once we launch back out of here, that'd be a good long. You see they're putting this in now. I don't, it's semi-important, but I like liquidity that's been in there all day, right? Um, you know, we could, so say this does come back down here, rip through here, I would, Again, that's going to be the bottom of that market profile, too. If I get another stop run, and then I'll take a long down here. I will give it a shot. If this comes down, fills this, and pops up. But if you know if that doesn't happen and we get one more setup, I'll go long down here as well. Give it a shot. We're watching that. The crude is uh, not quiet on us. So I want to see how this reacts here. Again, if I start to see some, so where you can use your tick strike, if you start to hear some major selling, you can hop in here. You know, you have your sell ice that was just kind of protecting you. And you know, this is bearish, bearish market, short term anyway. Breaking down out of this here. Did I turn off my sound? Hold on one second here. I was wondering why I wasn't hearing the crude stuff. I, I can't believe he has his, his set on one. I would I would lose my mind. I, I already lose my mind at set at 11. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. He's, he must not be watching as many markets. I don't know, but I would. You guys would be visiting me. You'd be watching my webinars with me presenting in a loony bin. So I'm starting to hit the yes a little bit. Let's see what's going on here. Are we actually gonna. Again, I will take the short in ES. I'm not expecting much, but you know, it doesn't matter what I expect. If I see a break out of the zone, I will take the short. We know there's ice there. We haven't violated it. There's your sell ice. If it gets below there, I think we can come down in these areas that we talked about with Amar. So what I'll do is if this come, this is where I use the tick strike the most, I'm going to start finding other methods to use it. Like I was thinking about a ton of stuff yesterday because I was thinking of questions to ask him. But if this comes down below this zone, half ATR, and these stocks are firing off, I get at least three of these stocks firing off, minus 11 or more, I'll just short it. I'll put my stop in ATR above there. ATR is 2.2. So I'd say two and a half. I'll round up to two and a half. There is liquidity up here, and as usual, they'll probably get their fill. But you know, you got to remember this is Fed Day too, so this you could easily just do one of these and then just come back and then do this until the Fed comes out. Then fill these guys so they get their shorts on, and then finally sell off. If that could happen too. But that's hypothetical. I'm playing the, you know, liquidity is important to me, but if we break out of this zone, that's more important to me, right? If we break out of this balance, there's a lot of there's longs that are in this that are going to have to puke and I think it can make it easily down to this and then this is the next one down here balance back and forth trade that's all it is all right, I'll give this a few more minutes to see if something actually happens I think I may have missed this I don't know if this was firing off or not So ATR and crude is 25. 
to your, you can move, just move the decimal 24.9, so say 25. Bottom of the zone was 04. We got down to 84, so that was, was not a full ATR below there. <clears throat> but again, if this, if I'm now watching this, if this comes up here, retest and starts to fail and this, they start hitting it, I will hop in a short. So as my room member know, room members know, crude out of all markets will retest the zone before going. I'd say 85% of the time it'll retest. Russell Ice Iceberg Alert. So Russell Ice Ice. Something's going on on Russell. So that is definitely threshold. Uh, Russell, we use 150 threshold for that. That's definitely it. So you go and use your little, little um, crosshair, find out where that spike started spiking lower. Let's say right about there. Again, you can imagine how much easier this will be for all you where I just draw the zone and it populates it in your chart. You can almost save you years off of your life. There you go. Actually, I say sell ice, so let's make it black. We haven't covered Russell A. Let's take a look. Usual verticalness. So, you know, this is basically all time highs as well, I'm assuming. I know this broke out of a monster. Let's look at this daily real quick. But I will short up here because it's just, it's so far from, yeah, this is all time highs. You can see stuff's all fractal, right? And this is just a major balance area daily. we broke out from this is going back to beginning of the year broke out this is you know this is pretty far from this I, I still think this can continue to roll but I will take shorts and, and but I'll definitely be looking for longs back into the top of this guy 100% but I you could take a short up here with, with this setup you know if this fails Again, you got sell ice up here. I would definitely temper your expectations. So every every time I see stuff and it's Fed Day, like I get all excited, and then the thing just sits and does nothing. So just keep that in mind. Even though Beeks gave uh, Randolph and Mortimer the number before uh, you're we making fun of that last night from trading places when they had the wrong grain report. <clears throat> Somebody knew something last night. Crew got smushed. Gold got smushed. They, again. Crude is one thing, but gold never makes those types of moves before the Fed. After the Fed, it, it does, but not before. If somebody knows something. This is such an important area for gold. Such an important area. High volume node, directional conviction, right here. I just, I just wish I we had one more. Even though this is, uh, this. Query is kind of dissipating here. I'm definitely going to take this long here. I would just love one more, one more move, one more stop run. Let these clowns get filled and then watch it rip. I'll stay on for a couple more minutes to see if we can get this move down. And then crude. Yeah, of course, Celtic Tiger, I know. So Celtic, my room said GC will probably sit here until the meeting, then make the move. Yeah, I think I missed the boat on that one. As far as the not going long, but could have definitely traded it overnight. You know, again, the gold looks, crude looks way more bearish short term than gold. This is this is in big trouble short term. I think we're coming down like to these areas here. And the next, not, I'm not saying that's going to happen today. It could, but the next few days, if once it gets through this, 
we already got to the high volume now. So once it can clear this, which is real close to doing, and then whatever this this little dude here, this is gone. There's nothing like this. This is I'm very excited to short that. All right. So hopefully you guys found that uh, tick strike webinar informative. Again, it's it's just it's all the same stuff, right? And just it's just a different way of viewing it or listening to it. But it's real time volume. That's what drives the markets every day. Say the same thing. <clears throat> I can definitely see this just sitting here, like Celtic said, to the Fed. So the Fed meets at what, one o'clock central, but it's 11 here. Let's see if there's any other questions. You guys got any questions for me in the, the go to webinar stuff? This is an ask. So nothing's really happening here. Uh, yeah, there'll be a recording for the webinar. I'll put it. Uh, um, I'm trying to think the best way. I'll definitely put it on YouTube on my YouTube channel. I'll try to send it out to the to everyone that uh, was on this webinar as well. I just got to figure out how to do that. I've never done it through the go to meeting stuff, but it will definitely be on my YouTube channel. I think Lamar answered these other questions. You guys have any other questions for me? Fire away. Cool, it's Eddie from Dallas. She trained me last year on book map. Awesome, how's it going? Have you been trading or are you just getting back into trading? <clears throat> You're not going to give me a retest of that, so. <laughs> So if we, you know, this starts moving down and I get a stop run, we're almost through these tails and that's what I wanna see. So this zone, this red zone was from like seven years ago, but it's still obviously relevant, right? It was resistance, now it's support, support, support. Is it gonna hold or are we gonna get through here? I think we're gonna get through there. You're asking me, no idea. Our grain producers allowed to long futures of grain. I'm sure I'm sure they can do whatever they want, like anybody else that has got funds that churns size through the markets. The bigger your pockets, the more you can do. 80.75 is the bottom of this, this tail here. We're pretty close to busting that. Pretty close to busting the move. Algo guy, bearish. See, it took one shot. To, this is the, that was that dumb and dumber. Got back below here, couldn't pull the blue. We talked about this a lot more often lately. Couldn't pull the blue above, got back below, go time. This is the trade I missed when I, I got out from my desk. That was the short, still short. But you can see it here comes your tick strike. I'm expecting to see some kind of major stop run here now. The 75 area is very important. And then I will hopefully play it as a stop and hold. Get some stop, stop, sell alert at CL. 
165 contracts. It's like I'm psychic or something. How did I know that was going to come in? There's threshold. I like 150 or more. It's 150. So this is do or die for crude here right now. It's either going to hold this and snap back or it's going to free fall. So ATR in here is uh, 25. So half ATR is obviously 12, 12 and a half. So, you know, again, I was thinking about this stuff last night. Like you can start to, if you're using tick strike or getting tick strike, you can, if this thing starts to motor out of this zone and you're seeing max selling, hop on. If it comes down, if, it's going to be very telling if it comes down here and you see no selling, right? That should warn you like, okay, this thing's not ready to go yet. Again, this is information that 99% of traders do not have. And it's the key information that you need to be a successful trader. Guys are trading off bar charts. And like I said earlier in the webinar, you're the best technician, market technician on the planet. You still don't know everything. You don't have all the information. Let's see what happens here. important level here. Bottom of this zone from seven years ago is 8045-ish. I mean, if you're bold, you can take a long out of this zone too. I'm I'm looking for short mainly. Well, you could take it. You could take a long here too. You know, depending on your thesis, right? This is why trading is trading. You may have a different look at this. You may say, you know what? We're coming to the top of this. I know that's where that tail was. I know there was a stop run. If that doesn't hold, you can you could buy this. So I said it's a very important area. These are one of this is one of the areas you can trade either way, depending on what happens with this setup. So it's going to be interesting to see if this thing can get, put this at 10, see if you see some real buying out of this. The best long is going to be if you wait, this is probably going to play games down here, right? And then we know if that zone holds, we already know, have that information. And then as this comes down, and then if you can get across here, blue back above, again, this is, we call this algo guy in my room. This is a exponential moving average. Um, if you get the blue back above, then we're, we're going to get a rally. And this area is going to hold again. We're not there yet. You can see, you know, I was waiting for a short, but if you, it wasn't, that's not a bad area to take along. Nothing happened here, so that's not the big money actually buying it. Right there, and my, you know, this is what this is based off of: is the size of the orders and the frequency of the orders. Let's say this comes down here and does that, and you hear nothing. Well, then as it moves back out, you can just go long. If it comes down here again, this is what crude does, right? If you understand, this is what it does. Now we're probably going to bounce right off this zone and retest this zone. It'll probably do this for a few times. But if this comes back down here and you see the max selling, I'm going 
going short. But do you see like how this helps you these knowing these areas of volume? Like if you were just watching that on the bar chart, you're like, all right, let's go time short. We we broke that, we broke that uh area. We got below that 75, right? Got just by a few ticks, you're like, yes, I'm in. And then it snaps back in your face. And you're like, well, what just happened? Well, what happened is there was a stop run there and there was no follow through. You avoided trouble. Like I was looking for shorts. I avoided, I didn't just jump in. I wanted to see this get below this zone. Never happened, gone. Still not seeing, this is interesting. I'm not real, you're not seeing any real buying. Buying gold here. Get real close to retesting that stop run for that dumb and dumber. I wanted to see one flush to go along there. That's a little upsetting. I still think we may get it, but. This is the pattern for those of you that don't know. Here's the set, set up, bounces off this old one, comes down, retest, came real close, a tick or two. Watching the algo guy here. Because trust me, in this important area, once this crosses and you got the algo is kicking in, you're going to get a, a move back up. If it crosses, if it doesn't, again, the guy that I learned this from, the way he trades it, this is where he would get short, right here. He waits for pullbacks into the red. And then once it moves back out, that's where he would get short. So this can still do that as well. And then we know we need to watch what happens down here. Two hours in this zone for ES. This is a little upsetting here. I wanted to go along this. Got a little too fine. Came within basically three ticks of that zone. I have a feeling we're just going to range it out to like Jay Z said. I, let's see this. All right, I'm going to stand for a couple more minutes. I just want to see what happens if when we retest the zone, if it rips back through it. <clears throat> Number one thing is, did we get an ATR above this zone? Top of the zone was 76. ATR is 25. Yes, we did. Yeah, almost basically 30 ticks above there. So this is considered a dumb, dumber, dumb money puke, no follow through, rejection. So if this comes down, retest fails, you can get in. What would be the best of this retest and then you start to see some real buying? That would be awesome. And then what will happen here is we take one more retest there, fail. If we get back inside this guy, then we're going to make him move back to the top of there. I'm still going to be looking for shorts up there as well. That's what I wanted initially. I was hoping we'd move back to the high volume nodes of this to short it, and it still may happen. I guess we got close. If it comes up here, that. There's so many tool, different tools that I'm trying to figure out. Getting there. There is, but there's not. I mean, this is basically the same stuff, right? I mean, you're just listening to volume come in versus watching it. And then if you know your setups, 
you know, I show my room all these different things. It doesn't mean you have to use all of these different things, right? You can say, hey, I'm just watching market profile. You can be a very proficient trader just trading off of composite value areas, meaning just days merge and buy. You can be very, I mean, you can see this. It's all day, every day, right? Like you come up with stories, like try to get back in here, fail, say, I want to be short. Broke out of here. If this can't get back inside, you want to be short. If this gets inside this one, you want to be short. I got the sweet landscapers outside, so sorry about that noise. All right, guys, I'm going to hop off here. I've been on for over two hours. So, you know, again, this is an important area in crude. This could, if we come down here, you have tick strike, you see some buying, you can get in, open, we get a retest. If it gets through here, I'm going to go short. I won't consider long there though on a retest. If this starts motoring up and you start getting new signals up here long, I will go long because I think we can make it move back up into that all the way through this uh, my, my profile or the volume profile, right? All right, one more look at pathetic ES and then I'm going to hop off here. what I'm complaining about. I knew today was going to be like this. Ticket movement in gold and crude, though. That's what happens when someone knows the number before it comes out. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, hopefully that was informative for you. I'll find a way to post. I'll post it on my YouTube. I'll find a way to try to share it with everyone who signed up for the webinar. Uh, and then room members, I'll be back at uh, 2 o'clock Central. I might, I might even come in earlier, right after Gold the Fed meets. TC, 169 congrats. I missed the boat on this one. So you can play this. I'm assuming this is going to be, even though this liquidity down here didn't get filled, if this is a stop and hold, you could go long. And we're going to rally back in a little bit. We've discussed all that. Um, but I'll be back at 2 p.m. Central. I might get on a little earlier because of the Fed. I'll, I'll put, it, put that in the room if I do. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by the webinar. Appreciate it. Talk to you later.